the footage that you're watching is my attempt to be a little bit more creative with my video and me learning slash teaching myself how to make better bike content. So hello and welcome to Queer Cyclist. And today I am gonna talk about how to get the most out of your smartphone when you are shooting footage on your bicycle. So for these particular shots that you're watching, I got together with my friend Devin who needed some footage for Instagram reels. She's sponsored by Diamondback and wanted some shots of her riding this like super nice bike that they just sent her. Coincidentally, this really worked out because I wanted to try out a new gadget that I got that I am hoping will help me up my content game a little bit. I wanted to try something different than kind of your standard GoPro chest mount or like you just using the GoPro or like the Insta360 and other ways that people typically shoot footage on their bikes. To shoot all of my videos, I have a GoPro 9 and I have an iPhone. At some point I would like to make the upgrade to get some better camera equipment, but right now it works fine for me. So within these constraints, I've been thinking about how to up my content creation game. How can I get better footage from what I have? So last fall for Black Friday, I picked up an iPhone gimbal. Specifically, I picked up the Zhiyun Smooth 4 Professional Gimbal Stabilizer. It's a pretty cool piece of gear that keeps your iPhone stabilized while you're moving. There are definitely better gimbals out there, but I picked this one up for less than a hundred dollars. I think I got it for like 70 or 60 or 70 bucks or something like that. And typically you can get these for between a hundred and a hundred and twenty dollars. I think that there is a lot of focus on convenience when it comes to shooting footage on a bike. With the GoPro or the Insta360, you just kind of press a button and you're, you're filming. So using a gimbal is not the easiest, nor is it the most convenient way to film on a bicycle. However, if you are wanting to create very specific kinds of B-roll or if you want to make TikToks or Instagram reels or what uh, YouTube shorts or uh, something like short and sweet, this is a pretty nifty tool to have. You can use it with whatever smartphone, but if you have a newer phone that's bigger or heavier, you're going to need a counterweight. And you need this so that the weight of your phone doesn't overpower the motors that keep the iPhone stabilized. And they actually make counterweights specifically for this gimbal. The one that I picked up is called the Each Shot Universal Counterweight. They come with four 20 gram aluminum weights that you can add or remove depending on the weight of your phone. I have an iPhone 13 Pro and I needed two weight, so 40 grams. I found that with those two weights, it just really balanced the iPhone perfectly. In addition to this, I also picked up an extension rod because I was like, ooh, maybe I could get some cool overhead shots, but uh, <laughs> did not quite work out that way as you will see. So as soon as you add those counterweights and fire up the gimbal, you should get a stable shot right out of the box. So here's a clip shot by hands with me just holding the iPhone. And here is a shot filmed with a gimbal. And the difference is super apparent. The one shot by hand is a little bit more shaky and the one with the gimbal is clearly much more smooth. However, I will say while it does work right out of the box, the gimbal does take a little bit of tweaking. There are a couple of points where I was just walking along trying to follow my friend Devin to get kind of a wraparound shot and the whole thing just went berserk. It did not like what I was doing, but with a couple of tweaks, I got it to follow her like pretty well, but it definitely is not perfect. You do need to adjust it a little bit. After a while, I did get the hang of it and kind of got a sense of how I needed to move with the gimbal and I got it to work for me eventually and ended up getting these really cool shots. I also tried using the extension pole. I'm pretty sure that I got this extension rod after watching a YouTube video that was probably titled how to get epic overhead shots without a drone. Well, let me tell you, it did not look like a drone shot. It looked like I put a camera on the end of a pole. <laughs> Plus it was so heavy that I couldn't actually sustain the weight of the gimbal 
as I was holding it on my bike. And so like my arm got tired immediately because all of the weight was like really far out. Yeah, it felt a little bit like I was holding a mallet and I also couldn't see the shot. Like it wasn't in front of me, it was like way in the air above me. And so most of that shot that I tried to do was just of the bike path and not of Devin, uh, which I, uh, yeah, I think I just need a little bit more practice with that one. So a couple of issues came up when I was actually shooting the footage. And the first thing is that the gimbal is actually really heavy and it does take some concentration if you are shooting on the bike. We shot on both paved and gravel trail. And I, especially on the gravel trail, I hit some rocks. It, like there were a couple of harrowing moments where I was about to crash. So the next time that I take out the gimbal, I'm gonna bring my mountain bike because it's got wider tires and it's a lot more stable. The other thing about this gimbal is that it's really awkward and cumbersome and it doesn't fit neatly into any of my bike bags. While I was riding, I put it in my Bags by Bird gold bag, which is a massive bag and it still didn't really fit in there very well. It was like poking out of the side. Like I would have to stop, pick it up, like set it up. So using this is not like for something like that's really quick and easy that you can just like point and shoot. It's something that you really need to be more thoughtful about, which has its place when you're making this kind of content. So if you're making TikToks or reels, this is something that might work for you. But if you're looking to make long form content, Something like a GoPro with a chest mount or an Insta360 would work probably a lot better. I definitely wouldn't take this on a long trip, but if I did, I would have to find a way to pack it. And I'm really not sure where I could even fit this on my rig or on, on a bike packing trip. Overall, however, I feel pretty happy with how this footage came out. It's really smooth and stable and I like the footage that the iPhone shoots. And so it's going to work for me for now. I definitely don't think getting a gimbal is for everyone, but for me and for those of you who like making bike content for under a hundred dollars on sale, this is a pretty sweet setup. That's all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it useful. If you enjoyed it, please like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week.